Welcome back to the Chess Goals YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the four steps to chess improvement. I've been thinking a lot about this and what works for chess improvers, what things don't work, and I've summarized everything into four steps for you guys. And I'm going to dive a little deeper into each point, talk about how to improve on chess, and then hopefully you can apply these things to your own chess improvement. So let's get started. Number one, have a process. Um, a study plan is a really powerful component, I believe, to chess improvement. So find a plan that you believe will work for yourself. It's a very individual thing. What works for me is going to be a little bit different than what works for you and what works for Magnus Carlsen. You got to find something that works for yourself. Um, one thing that I've done is I've analyzed data from over 400 chess improvers to create chess goal study plans. And I believe those study plans are a good starting point for new chess players or chess players that are all of a sudden kind of getting into chess improvement, but maybe you've been playing for 10, 20 years. Um, so those chess goal starting study plans are a good starting point, I think. And you can tweak them from there, figure out what works for you and get that plan in place first. And this will help you stay focused on what you need to work on. And that's what's going to lead into our next step. So number one, have a process. Number two is make a habit. This is something that I've been inspired by the Atomic Habits book, and it really got me thinking about chess habits and how can we use habits to improve our own chess abilities. And I think if you can stay motivated and make it a habit to study, then the process just becomes that much easier. You already have a study plan. Now you just need to stay motivated. And what we do at Chess Goals is we have daily checklists. So every day you can check off which activities you did. Um, but you can also use things like chess.com daily games where they'll send you reminders. Hey, it's your move. Come on to the Chess Goals or the sorry, the chess.com app. Um, you could use a to-do app where maybe every single day it says, hey, you have to check off this item on your phone. Make sure you studied your chess or played your chess. Um, the next thing is accountability. So for Chess Goals, we have the Chess Goals Discord server. And if you'd like to join Chess Goals, there's a link in the description below. And what I like about the Discord server is it really gets you talking about chess, right? You can post your goals in there. You can post your wins. You can post your fails. Um, and you can read about other people's successes. And it really kind of keeps you motivated and holds you accountable for your own chess improvement. Right? If you tell people, hey, I'm going to study every single day at 7 a.m., they might ask you, how's your studying going? Right? Or you can ask me directly questions in our Discord server. So that's another thing that's nice about that server. I like to help people with study plans. I like to help customize study plans. Um, all that's available if you join Chess Goals. And then the last thing is positive feedback. There's different types of feedback that works well for different people. Um, one thing that a lot of players really like to look at is a chess rating. And I think there's pros and cons to this. Over time, I do hope that your chess rating goes up and it shows improvement. But there's also things along the way that can be good positive feedback metrics, like streaks. So maybe you're using an app that tracks every single day how many streaks or how many days in a row you've completed your chess study. That's a motivator, right? That's positive feedback. Um, the daily checklist that we have for chess goals, that's another one, right? As you check things off, that's positive feedback. And also having friends or mentors, uh, that's another good one, right? So if you have people that are telling you good job and helping you along the way, that's going to keep you motivated as well. That's more positive feedback. Next, we're going to talk about staying flexible. This is an important one. Uh, this is step number three for chess improvement. I think players need to use takeaways to get better at chess. And the reason I say this is because you don't want to get stuck in a rut of doing the same things over and over. If you're looking to improve, you need to do something a little bit different to reach that next level. So that's where chess takeaways come in. And this is something that I talk about all the time. So after every single game, you should take a few notes. Think about your takeaways. Jot down some things that are good and some things that are bad about the game. So for example, here's three bad habits that I have. These are my own personal takeaways 
when I've done some self-reflection on my chess. Number one, I'm too passive when I have the advantage. I tend to get a little bit defensive. I start to think too much about what my opponent's going to do and not as much about how can I win this game quickly. Number two, I simplify. And I think I simplify out of laziness. So when I'm not wanting to calculate too deeply, I will just go for trades. That's a very bad habit. And that's something that now I start to think about when I'm about to make those trades. Hey, Matt, you're doing this bad habit again. Maybe you should not trade. Look for other moves first. Uh, Number three, I miss candidate moves when calculating. So Usually I do a good job calculating deep enough, but I don't calculate wide enough. So this tends to be for classical games with slower time controls. I don't look at enough candidate moves from the start. So I might only look at one or two moves and go down a narrow path, but I need to take a wider path and calculate more moves instead of just focusing on calculating a couple moves deeply. Those are my three bad habits that I think stand out. Three good habits that I have. I spot quick tactics pretty well. I think that comes with playing blitz. You know, if I play enough blitz, I usually feel pretty sharp, and I'm going to spot those tactics more often than my opponents, I think. Number two, I play well with the initiative. When I have control of the position and I'm creating threats, I tend to do well in those positions. And number three, my Rick and Pawn endgames, I think, are strong. So that's an area where I feel pretty confident taking the game into a Rook and Pawn endgame to try to convert a win. So what you can do then, once you have your takeaways, try to reinforce the good habits, right? Try to keep noticing, when do I do things that are working well? And give yourself a little pat on the back, right? You don't always want to be hard on yourself and say, these are all the bad habits, because then it doesn't make chess as fun, which is going to be our fourth step to chess improvement. And so you look to reinforce the good, change the bad, and have a takeaways spreadsheet. So at the end of this video, I'm going to link to another video with the takeaways spreadsheet. And I also have a blog post on how to analyze chess games. I'll put a link in the description. But I want to know in the comments, let me know for yourself, what's a good balance in terms of positive and negative takeaways? This is something that I was thinking about um, just this morning. Is it one-to-one? And I think that's what works well for me. Or is it something more like two to one or three to one? Um, Is it more motivating to you to have three good takeaways for every one thing to work on? Because for everyone, it's different. So I don't want this to be an across the board thing that says, hey, everyone needs to have more positive than negative or more negative than positive. Let me know in the comments what works best for you, because I want to kind of collect that data so that I can help. Uh, new chess improvers figure out what balance works for them. All right, last step is to have fun. And I know this is just sounding cliche, but we need to have fun playing chess, right? Why do you play chess? You want to have fun, right? It's a hobby. It's something you enjoy. So I think you just have to keep this in mind. Too often I see players that get stressed out because they're trying so hard to improve and maybe they're really focused on the rating. And it's just not going up as quickly as they'd hope. Or maybe they're in a plateau or it's even decreasing for a while. You have to do what's fun. Trust the process. And if you trust the process and it's not working, try to alter the process, right? Try different things. Just constantly be learning and do what works for you, right? So if you dislike playing blitz, which I hear all the time, play slower chess. If you dislike slow chess, Play faster chess. I know it sounds simple, but it doesn't have to be complicated. There's many ways to improve. And let's say you really hate blitz chess. I hear this a lot. Try to just slowly add blitz chess in, right? Give it a try. Maybe play five plus five. It's a little bit slower than, for example, three plus zero. And try to play one blitz game a week. And just go into that blitz game and say, you know what? I'm going to have fun. I'm focused on getting a couple takeaways, working on my chess intuition, and being able to quickly spot good moves. I'm going to use Blitz for that specific purpose, but then 90% of the time I play games, maybe I'll play rapid chess. That's completely fine, right? So you have to do what works for you. There's many ways that you can improve, so keep chess fun. All right, next steps. I hope this video really helped you out, um, giving you some ideas on how to improve. 
please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's one way that you can kind of keep getting this chess improvement content. We have an email list on our website, chessgoals.com. And then also in the description, we have a link to join Chess Goals. So please consider joining us at Chess Goals. We have hundreds of chess improvers already that have been on Chess Goals study plans. And I'm going to leave you guys with a takeaways video. It's going to be down here to my left. Um, go check that out. Learn more about chess takeaways. So hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.